Welcome back. You are tuning in to Traders Nation. My pleasure to have with us here today, Lewis Sorley, author of The Better War, The Unexamined Victories and Final Tragedy of America's Last Years in Vietnam. Lewis, welcome to Traders Nation. How are you today? I'm well. Thanks for having me. Good, good, good. You know, the years of conflict in Vietnam from 1968 to 75 offered surprises, not only about how the war was fought, but about what was achieved. What was achieved, Lewis? In the first part, sure. uh, killing a lot of the enemy. Yeah. Uh, this is General Westmoreland's approach to winning the war. He thought if he killed enough enemy, they'd lose heart and yeah. cease their aggression against the South. Uh, he killed a lot of enemy, but that didn't work. They just replaced them and kept on with what they were doing. But in the latter years of the war, what I call in my book a better war, uh, a new general, General Craig Abrams, had a different understanding of the nature of the war and of how it should be fought. He, he continued combat operations, of course, but he changed them considerably. And he did two things that General Westmoreland had largely ignored. One was improve South Vietnam's armed forces so they could take over more and more of the responsibility for their nation's defense. Sure. And secondly, even more important, rooting out the covert infrastructure that was in the rural hamlets and villages of South Vietnam and, and using terror and coercion to keep the populace under enemy control. Yeah, you know, that's a, that's a big, big thing, is it, for the enemy to do that, to, to subvert, uh, subvert uh, the population and to fight against, uh, you know, who they're, who they're fighting against as, as far as the war is concerned. I mean, that was a big, big deal, wasn't it? It, he, it and was, and it had taken them years to establish that, and it took some time to root it out, too. But, but the fact, the reason uh, the la later years were a better war is in the earlier years, those battles out in the deep jungles were having no effect whatsoever on the enemy in, in the hamlets and villages. Yeah. And that's where the real war was. The, the prize of, of the war, if you want to put it that way, yeah. was control of the people. Right. Right. And I think that's absolutely critical. And we're actually seeing that today in, in the wars that we're in today. And, and we'll get to that. So General Westmoreland thought he'd come in. And and by brute force, this is how this is going to be done. Of course, some military tactics, right? Um, but it just didn't pan out. In general, Abrams, he was smart enough to recognize this isn't working and had to go in a different direction, and that's what he did, right? That is, that is what he did. And, of course, he realized, too, uh, he was astute politically as well as militarily. He re realized the American people were not going to uh, uh, have us be there forever yeah. and, and needed to work his way out of that. In In the early years, General Westmoreland had pretty much hogged all the best weaponry for the American forces, right. whereas the enemy had been supplied with a great AK-47 assault rifle by their patrons, uh, sure. communist uh, Chinese and the Soviets. And when Abrams took over, he said, no, no, the, the Vietnamese now get first priority, and they get first priority for the, for the good weaponry, the M-16 rifle in particular, sure. and, and also for things like close air support and, and uh, artillery support and other things, helicopters too that made them more effective. Right. How, how critical was it for uh, General Abrams to be a student in the political arena? He, he not only didn't have to know the military side, but he had to know the politics side because he, he was fighting a war back in Congress, wasn't he? Well, well said, and, and he was astute enough to appreciate that. It, during the period General Westmoreland commanded in the earlier years, his reaction to every crisis was to act for, ask for more troops. And, and for a long time he got them, so he built up over 500,000 troops during his tenure. Right. General Abrams never asked for any more troops, and in fact, during his four years in command, we progressively withdrew our forces. Right. Abrams understood the necessity for that, the, the inevitability of it, if you wish, and uh, and his whole concern was to help the South Vietnamese get ready to stand on their own uh, once our forces were gone. Right. Ultimately, what, what, what lost the Vietnam War for America? What was it? The Congress of the United States. All right. The the South Vietnamese were holding their own and doing quite well, all right. despite all the bad uh, 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 accounts of them by people who were opposed to the war. But we had promised them support, especially financial support, and the Congress progressively whittled that away to the point where the, the South Vietnamese did not have the wherewithal to continue to fight. Yeah. And meanwhile, the North Vietnamese were getting greatly increased support from their patrons. Yeah, Lewis, you know, this sounds hauntingly familiar. Back in during Vietnam, uh, Congress was dominated by the Democrats. Same thing here today. We can't make up our minds. You know, are we going to send more troops? We're not going to. I don't know. Does it sound familiar to you? And if so, what can our generals that uh, have their boots on the ground in Afghanistan and Iraq do about that, if anything? 
Well, I, I'm hoping, of course, that we are going to get a better outcome here, and that's that's uh, to be determined, still to, to be determined. I'm a little sympathetic to the time the president is taking, and I'll tell you why. Okay. Uh, as we all know, uh, even though he's the commander-in-chief, he has no military background or experience. None. And, and I think he may well be using these uh, uh, extended sessions with his senior military leadership, both uniformed and, and in the civilian side of it, to educate himself so that when he makes a decision, he has a pretty good appreciation of the implications of doing that. Sure. The other thing uh, that may be happening, I'm, I'm certainly not a, a confidant of anybody in the administration, but what he may be doing is, is a, a sensing the degree of political support that he can engender for what it is he decides he wants to do. Sure. Now, I, you know, I don't have a problem with him. You're right. His inexperience is now, it's almost like analysis, per, the, the, the paralysis through analysis is what's going on here. <laughs> Not quite sure because this, that's a true sign of inexperience is what I'm seeing. I could be wrong. I'm going to let everyone be the judge on that. I don't have a problem with him being educated, but then we have 60,000 troops in Afghanistan that need help. And versus like Vietnam, we had 500,000. How can we win a war with sixty thousand? Well, it's a different it's a different situation, of course. Yeah. And the weaponry is different now. The uh, the key, really, I think, and and Abrams certainly believe this in in Vietnam is good intelligence. If you have good intelligence, you can make the forces available to you uh, much more effective, and they can uh, you could say they could go farther uh, rather than just building up more force. And you use the term brute force in re- when you were speaking earlier about. Right. The Westmoreland approach, and that was that's exactly right, and and so a, a more discriminating approach based on better intelligence uh, can make forces go farther. All right, how are we going to get out of Afghanistan, and when do you think it'll happen? Because uh, and we got to do it to win. I, uh, we've we've said for years we've got to get out of there, but we've got to win, and that's critical for the United States. Can we do it? Well, I happened to be at a session just last week where General Petraeus was talking to an audience of veterans and students. Yeah. And, and he made it clear that the irreducible minimum of our objectives there is to reduce or, if possible, eliminate Afghanistan as a base for international terrorism that threatens us and our allies right. around the world. So we don't have to reform the whole country right. if we can do that, and, uh, and I'm hoping that we can. But what I would most, not, uh, most hate to see happen is that we sort of temporize and, and either don't put in what it takes to achieve that objective or alternatively withdraw but put in inadequate resources and then you know fail and meanwhile our soldiers there are paying the price last question we re- talk with withdrawal too early big bloodshed uh we saw it in vietnam we got out of there uh, south vietnamese uh were, were murdered by the hundreds of thousands could we see the same thing in afghanistan if we pull out too early it's uh it's conceivable, but I think there's some important differences there. Yeah. Afghanistan. This is both a plus and a minus for our, uh, uh, from our point of view. Uh, Afghanistan seems to me to be much more fragmented, fragmented politically, fragmented uh, ethnically. Sure. You know, you hear a great deal about the tribal influences there and so on. Right. Whereas in Vietnam, uh, you had the lowland Vietnamese, and then you had the Montagnards in the highlands. But uh, that was that was pretty much the extent of it. All right, so then you have all those internal fracture points. All right, so the fragments really can be like firewalls between tribes, if you will. All right, that would well, that that's would a, that's a good point. They could operate positively in that respect, or negatively if they cause the uh, continued internal dissension amongst the tribes. So it could it could resolve as far as a countrywide bloodshed because of all the different firewalls between the tribes. All right, now. Look- where can we get a copy of A Better War today? Where can, where can we buy a copy? The, probably the easiest is to go online to uh, Amazon.com or BarnesandNoble.com. I think they have a, a new supply now that's just been published. All right. Lewis Early is with us here today, A Better War, uh, the unexamined victories and final tragedy of America's last years in Vietnam. Uh, Lewis, thanks for your time today. appreciate it's it. It's been my pleasure. Thank you, you're, sir. You're more than welcome. Head on over to uh, Amazon.com. It's a great place. Barnes & Noble. Local book, uh, bookstore on the corner is a great place to support that guy in your community. Just get a copy of A Better War today by Lewis Sorley. Do appreciate that.